I can't pretend that I'm not annoyed by the release of the new book by Andre de Reita called Truth to Power. Andre de Reita is the ex-CEO of ESCOM who tendered his resignation in December, I think in December in 2022. He was meant to be there for a notice period, but because of an interview he did with Annika Larson, I think it was for ENCA, they, they basically uh, fired him immediately, with immediate effect, asked him to leave. He made a lot of allegations, you know, about a lot of ministers and other people that are involved in some of the destruction of ESCOM and why we have such rampant load shedding. Um, and a lot of people called him a, a hero and that he was very brave. He said that they'd opened a lot of cases that had kind of gone missing and people had been released. He was requested by Parliament to come and present his findings in Parliament and he refused. Now, a lot of people after they released the book are still calling him a hero. They're saying he's very brave, etc. And it's, it's pissing me off, I won't lie, because there are hypocrisies and there's a lack of knowledge on, on what's happened with load shedding. We are in 16 years now of load shedding and it's thanks to the leadership of the ANC-led government starting all the way back from Thabo Mbegi who was given a report stating that we need to do something about our power stations and he did nothing about it. Instead, he tried to sell ESCOM and he failed. Jacob Zuma came in and with him came Matsila Koko and Brian Mulife who in 2016 and 2017 got rid of load shedding. We had no load shedding in 2016 and 2017 for those two years. And instead of those people being applauded as heroes, heroes, they are called criminals and today they have been charged. Both of them went to the Zondo Commission for state capture. And Brian Mulif had an, a, a, a very detailed report about Cyril Ramaphosa, Glencore, other people at ESCOM, we, which were part of the reason why we were struggling with power at ESCOM and the people that are involved in the dirt there. Chief Justice Raymond Zondo never went forward with those investigations. No one has ever went forward with those investigations. Not called a hero. Not called heroes. Instead, they are called villains today. And they have been charged. Brian Mulif and Matsila Koko. Fine. Andre Tereita used to be at Sasol. And there were questionable deals of him selling shares before he left. He went and he joined NAMPAC when it was worth 29 billion rand. And 84% of the value was eroded while he was CEO to a value of 5 billion rand. Some of the people that defend him say, look, at the time he came in, there was a high debt, over 70% of debt in the company. He brought it down to about 40%, but at some point it went up to like 50 something percent. He fired over 50% of the staff at NAMPAC while he was there, but he eroded the value of the company. Now, he didn't appoint himself. And this is part of the irony of why, even on both sides, I get pissed. I get pissed with the people defending this guy who's given us the worst load shedding in history. In 2022, we had 200 days of load shedding out of 365 days. The worst load shedding we have ever had. Worst by far. 200 days. Now, there are people that defend him, call him a hero. Oh, Andre Tereta is so brave. He failed at his job. He, he let go of some of the debt at ESCOM, which is to be applauded, but it's not great considering his core responsibility. But he did not place himself, and that's where some of the people that defend Black executives like Pagamani Hatebe, who left ESCOM saying that he is ill. Jabu Mabuza, who was the chairperson and the CEO and the supplier of ESCOM. What the fuck? You know, he ended up passing away uh, due to COVID. May he rest in peace. The people that defend black executives, Matsila Koko, Brian Molife, Andre Tereita did not place himself. Four, four senior cabinet man ministers gave us Andre Tereita. Praveen Kordan, the Minister of State Owned Enterprises, who has been woeful and who's horrible and who should have been fired a long time ago. Gwede Mantashe, who didn't like Andre Tereita towards the end, the Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources, who is very big on coal and he's also got a conflict of interest because apparently he benefits from coal. You've got Ibrahim Patel, the Minister of, uh, I think it's uh, Trade and Industries, I stand to be corrected. Then you've got Umamu Togo Titiza, who's currently the Minister of Agriculture. These are the four people that gave us Andre Tereita. But people are not saying, those are the four people that gave us Andre Tereita. Get rid of them. It's Andre Tereita. Andre says there are ministers that are involved. Mind you, the ex-finance minister Tito Mboweni was the chairperson of NAMPAC when Andre Tereita was the CEO. This guy's got a hugely incest incestuous relationship with our political leaders. But he's the first to... You know, it's the politicians and it's the, these are the people that placed you. 
But when you're failing to deliver on your mandate, you blame them. And the people that are blaming you are failing to blame the politicians who have been failing for 16 years. So this whole story makes me angry. Andre Derete refused to go to parliament to say his side and to name the ministers, to name the people that are involved in sabotage and corruption at ESCOM. He failed. Instead, he wants us to please buy my book. And now we must go buy a book. Instead of him doing his duty and being a patriot and going to parliament or going somewhere else and stating, he'd rather, oh, I'll sell you a book, buy my book, oh, let me make some money on the side. I think Andre Tereta is no different to our politicians. I think he is no different to the corrupt people. There are many corrupt people at ESCOM. We are still not speaking about Didi Mabuza, who was big in Pumalang, and some of the cartels and mafias, coal um, maintenance tenders at ESCOM. Those people are horrible and they need to be exposed. There are politicians in this country that need to be exposed, including Cyril Ramaphosa and his relationship with Glencoe, and he's still a supplier today to ESCOM. Old CEO of ESCOM, Brian Thomas, served for three years. And today, where does he, Brian Thomas sit? He sits at um, African Rainbow Energy, I think. Patrice Mutipe's energy company, which is going to come through and save the day with alternative. Cyril Ramaphosa's, Cyril Ramaphosa's pushing for alternative energy, raised an $8.5 billion loan. Andre Tereta was trying to push for green. Why are you pushing for green when we have coal? Gwede Mantash is saying, but we've got coal. But who Gwede Mantash himself has got a conflict of interest. None of these people fundamentally care about the people of South Africa. None of them fundamentally care about load shedding. And mind you, all our ministers never get load shed. They don't have load shedding. Cyril Ramaphosa does not know what load shedding is because he does not have load shedding. But then we keep voting for these people. We don't have intelligent or aggressive ways to remove them. But they are leading to the destruction we have today. And what's triggering me out of all of this is that you've got a lot of white people, some uppity blacks that are defending Andre Tereta as a hero. The fucking hypocrisy. So I call bullshit. Bullshit on the whole fucking thing.